Hello friends, today's video is an absolute beast. Please indulge me for a minute whilst I give you a quick rundown of what's in store. This has required countless hours of research and an entire playthrough of Elden Ring because today I bring you an exhaustive list of everything you should do before you hit that button and continue your adventure into New Game Plus, also known in Elden Ring as Journey 2. Initially, I really wanted to show you the physical location of every single thing that we'll be doing and collecting. However, after the first 20 hours, I realized that even with editing this down as short as possible this video would end up being hours and hours long therefore i hope the approach i've taken will prove useful i've grabbed examples of each task that we need to complete which will play in the background as a guide whilst i primarily utilize the map and talk you through everything you need to do before proceeding to journey 2. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. I hope you're having a fantastic day. We're going to start off with the smithing stone and sombre smithing stone bell bearings. But please note, you don't need to do this in the same order that I'm doing this video. Timestamps will be below to help you if you do need to jump around the video a bit as well. So, the smithing stone bell bearing 1 is found in the Rhea Lucaria crystal tunnel in northeast Lyurnia. This is one of the few caves in the game where when you open up your map you will physically see the entrance to the cave and it is just behind a walking mausoleum and we'll be talking about them later. To get the smithing stone bell bearing one, you just need to navigate the cave and beat the boss. Next up, we've got the smithing stone bell bearing two, and this one is to the south of the bottom lake in the Lanedale outskirts. It's very hard to miss this one, but when you go through the first cave area, continue exploring and you'll quickly see a chest in front of a wall. This is actually an illusionary wall, so you can grab the bell bearing from the chest and then break the wall and head through there as well if you want. Next up is obviously the smithing stone bell bearing 3. This one is very simple, but way later on in the game. You can only get here once you have access to the Grand Lift of Rold after completing Lanedale, the royal capital. And from the Zamor Ruins Site of Grace, which is the first one you'll come across in the mountain tops of the Giants, just head southeast into the ruins themselves. Run past the enemies if you want to, because they are quite powerful until you have this bell bearing to upgrade your weapon. And you'll be able to go down into an underground room, and it's in the chest just here. And finally, we've got the Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 4, which is along the critical path. You cannot miss this. It's a reward for defeating the Godskin Duo. With them for you can now get every single weapon to plus 24 and we'll be discussing the locations of the ancient dragon smithing stones later so you can max out your weapons at plus 25. Next up let's look at the locations for the somber smithing stone bell bearings. I have just now realized we've got more than 20 points to cover on this list and if they all take as long as that first one this video is going to be like an hour so I'm going to pick up the pace here and utilize the map to get us to these locations ASAP. So with that said the somber stone miners bell bearing one is located here in the Celia crystal tunnel and is a reward for beating the final boss. Next up, we've got the Altus Tunnel Site of Grace, right in the south of the crater in the Altus Plateau here. And again, the Somberstone Miners Bell Bearing 2 is a reward for defeating the duo Crystallian boss at the end of this dungeon. Next up, just with the Smithing Stone Miners Bell Bearing 3, the Somberstone 3 is also in the mountain tops of the Giants. Once you go past the Freezing Lake and you have found the first Church of Marika, just go out of the north entrance and it's on a corpse right in front of you. Next up, we've got the Somber Stone Miners Bell Bearing 4, which will allow you to infinitely buy Smithing Stones 7 and 8. This one can be missed, but it is still on the main path of the game, so as long as you're picking up every item, you practically cannot miss this. It is right by the Tempest Facing Balcony Site of Grace in the Crumbling Pharaoh Missoula, and it's pretty much right in front of you. And finally, for the Somberstone Miners Bell Bearing 5, which will allow you to infinitely buy the Somberstone 9. This again is in the crumbling Pharaoh Missoula, and once you have gone past the area with all the birds and the dragon that keeps shooting lightning at you, follow the main path and before long you'll enter into a chapel with a few beast men and it is at the foot of the altar right in front of you. As we're on the topic of bell bearings, let's just quickly review all the other bell bearings that we can grab. We will quickly blitz through all of the ghost and grave glove wart bell bearings in just a second. Before then, let me address the bell bearing hunters. These are four world bosses that will only spawn at night, and you will find them in these four locations respectively. The Warmaster's Shack in Limgrave, the Church of Vows in Lyurnia, 
the Hermit Merchant's Shack in the Lanedale outskirts, and the Isolated Merchant's Shack in Kaled. Each of them will drop a unique bell bearing that will allow you to infinitely buy certain crafting materials, and they can be especially useful if you're going for a crafting item heavy build. Now, as I say, let's move on to the Glove Wart bell bearings. The Grave Glove Wart bell bearing one can be found here in the Wyndham Catacombs once you defeat the final boss of this dungeon. Next up for the bell bearing two, you want to travel to the Giant's Mountaintop Catacombs in the Mountaintops of the Giants. And again, this one is dropped by the final boss. And finally, for Grave Glove Wart to unlock seven, eight, and nine, you'll need the bell bearing three. This one is found way off the beaten track here in the crumbling Faramazula. From the tempest facing balcony, Grace, go southwest back through the church and take the elevator on the other side. Then turn left and hug the wall until you get to an area with a lake. The item is under a gazebo next to this lake. This will allow you to get all of your regular spirit ashes to plus nine. We will come onto the great grave glove wart in just a minute. Firstly, let's review all of the ghost glove wart bell bearings. For the ghost glove wart bell bearing one, this is found on a corpse lying at the base of a gazebo in Nokron, just here. For number two, to unlock infinite access to Ghost Glove Wart 4, 5, and 6, this one is found in a chest guarded by several silver tiers with shields in the corner of this small room here in Noxtella. And finally, for the bell bearing three, again, this is way off the beaten path in Elphail Brace of the Halig Tree, so will require you to traverse a few other very difficult optional areas before you can even get here. And it is found on a grave in the western section of the graveyard in the northeast of the city. Now we'll move on to the plus 10 upgrade material for both smithing stones and glove wart. There are 13 ancient dragon smithing stones to be found in total, but quite a few of them are tied behind quest lines. You will get two if you do Nefeli Luz, Gatekeeper Gostox, and Kenneth Heights combined quest lines. You will get another one for doing Jeren and Selen's quest line and a fourth if you manage to collect all of the death route and complete Garank's quest line. So already that brings the total down to nine if you haven't been doing all the NPC quest lines. But nine is still a hell of a lot. And because I don't want this video to drag on for an eternity, I'll flash the areas up where they can be found on the map now and just highlight their locations for you. So as you can see, there's one here in the mountaintops of the giants, a further three in these locations in the consecrated snowfields, three more in the crumbling Faramazula, and two final can be grabbed in the Halig tree, totaling nine ancient dragon smithing stones. Now let's do the same for the somber ancient dragon smithing stones. There is even fewer of these, there is actually only eight, but only two are tied behind quest lines this time, so you can still get six even if you miss Latena's quest line and Millicent's quest line. And again, let's review the locations for the others now. So there is one here in the consecrated snowfields. Just to let you know though, this is dependent on you having defeated Anastasia Tarnished Eater two more times earlier on in the game. Once in Limgrave and once in Mount Gelmir. Then there is another somber ancient dragon smithing stone here in Mogwin Palace, just before you enter into Moog's boss arena. There are three more in these locations in Elphale, Brace of the Halig Tree. There is one more right at the end of the game in Lanedale, the Ashen Capital, just here. And there is one final one here in the crumbling Faramazula. And finally, we'll have a look at all of the Great Grave and Great Ghost Glovewort locations. Starting off with the Great Grave Glovewort, there are a total of six, two of which are dropped by the boss at the end of the Consecrated Snowfield Catacombs, cleverly hidden away in the corner over to the east. The next one is in the depths of the giant conquering hero's grave at the back of the room with the fire prelate. Next up we have two more in these two locations here in the crumbling Faram Azula. And finally there is one just here in the centre of the second lake of rot in Elphale branch of the Halig tree. Just beware of the ulcerated tree spirit waiting to burst out and kill you when you try and grab it. And then we'll wrap up this section with the four great ghost glove wart to strengthen your renowned and legendary ashes. The earliest and by far the easiest is here in the Ainsel River and it's in the room with the Dragonkin Soldier of Noxtella boss fight. The next one you will receive as part of Rani's questline and is 
inaccessible if you are not doing this quest line because this chest in the knight's sacred ground will not be accessible unless you are at the correct part of Rani's quest line. The third one is found in a chest at the back of a narrow room in Noxstella. Just beware of the silver tear disguised as a large iron ball hanging off of the ceiling waiting to ambush you. And the final one is just here in Mogwin Dynasty Mausoleum. The next thing you want to make sure that you've grabbed before you move into New Game Plus is all of the crystal tears. These are the items that you can mix into your flask of wondrous physic to provide various special effects and you can mix up to two of them at once. There are a total of 32 crystal tears in the game, 29 are unique and there are duplicates of three of them. Almost all of them are found at the base of minor erd trees, whether you can just collect them or whether you need to defeat a boss to receive them as a reward. There are a few exceptions to this rule, such as the very first one that you're likely to find in front of the statue in the Third Church of Marika, and also I believe all of the not crystal tears, the strength not, dexterity not, intelligence and faith are all also found in random locations and not under minor earth trees. I will just quickly call out the two or three that I believe are the most powerful. Firstly, and this one is especially useful if you are a sorcerer, you've got the Cerulean Hidden Tear. This one is dropped by an ulcerated tree spirit in Mount Gelmir, directly east of the Road of Iniquity Site of Grace, and this will eliminate all FP consumption for a few seconds, meaning you can spam the most powerful spells in the game for free. Next up, we have got the Opaline Bubble Tear. This is actually found super early on in the Weeping Peninsula, dropped by an Erd Tree Avatar boss beneath the Minor Erd Tree, and this will make you nearly invincible for the next attack. And the next one I wanted to shout out was the Opaline Hard Tier, which will temporarily boost all damage negation for a period of time. And this is dropped by the Putrid Avatar in Northeastern Kaled. There are many more, and as I say, there are over 30 of them, and I've given you the locations to most of them by just saying, look near Erd Trees. And whilst I've been talking, that's also given me time to flash up the locations for most of them on the map for you as well. But let's move swiftly onto something more important so this doesn't become the Elden Ring version of War and Peace. We talked about the bell bearing hunters earlier, and for the most part, they spawn in place of a few of the merchants in the game. And that brings us to the next thing that you want to do. Buy everything from all the merchants. Most of them have rune arcs, and rune arcs are a fairly limited item if you don't want to step into PvP and co-op. But there are also many more amazing items. You can get whole armor sets from these guys, spells, crafting materials, even invaluable resources like the Sentry's Torch and the Beast Repellent Torch. Alternatively, if you want to be a cruel bastard, and if you simply don't have the runes you need to buy everything from this merchant when you first find them, you can kill them all and collate all their bell bearings back at the Twin Maiden Husks in the Round Table Hold. This way you have access to all their shops in one easy and convenient location at the small price of knowing that you are an evil, heartless person. But don't worry, we've all considered it. Don't sleep on any of the merchants. Some of them have amazing items up for grabs. So make sure you go out of your way to find them all and buy all of their stuff and or kill them. <laughs> Enjoy. Now we're going to get onto something way juicier and that is Dragon Hearts. Dragon Hearts are used to purchase all dragon incantations from the Church of Dragon Communion in Kaled. There are many dragon incantations you can buy straight away, but each time you defeat one of the great dragons, you will unlock their upgraded version of that dragon incantation. There are a total of 23 Dragon Hearts obtainable on any new game cycle, and you actually only need 13 to purchase the six most valuable spells. There are many dragons that you will encounter naturally as you progress through the game so make sure you kill them all as you see them if you do want to be able to grab every single dragon incantation especially because one of them is a legendary incantation and we'll be covering them later on in the video the most important dragons you want to focus on is glintstone dragon ajula who is first found roaming around the three sisters area north of the Caria manor but will teleport to the cathedral of manus celeste and when defeated glintstone dragon ajula will drop three dragon hearts this area can only be accessed through Rani's questline. Next up, and the easiest in the whole game, because it's the most cheesed enemy in the game, is Elder Dragon Grail. It will actually drop five hearts when defeated. 
And the third and final most important one is Great Worm Theodorix, found in the frozen lake north of Albanorix Rise in the Consecrated Snowfields. And this one will drop three Dragon Hearts upon defeat. So already there, just by defeating three dragons, you have 11 of the 13 hearts required to get the six most important and most powerful dragon incantations in the game. Also, you'll be seeing lots more footage of the Great Worm Theodorix boss fight later on in the video because you can actually aggro the giant land squids and make them fight each other and it's hilarious and amazing to watch. And now, as I've already been touching on it, that is a perfect segue to go about talking about all of the spells and cookbooks that you want to collect. There are close to 60 cookbooks for you to collect in the game, so I'm gonna have to desperately try and rein myself in. And remember that the purpose of this video is just to help you identify everything that you do need to do before New Game Plus, and not literally show you every single item individually. Some of them contain absolutely fantastic items, and you do want to go and grab them all if you can. One that I'll shout out you see me collecting here in the Shifra River. This is the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 17 and is very important because it gives you the oil pot which you need as an optional part of Iron Fist Alexander's questline. My personal favourite cookbook that I will shout out is right at the start of the game in Limgrave. It is the Fervor's Cookbook 1 and allows you to craft the Sleep Pot, which can make certain fights so much easier. I'm looking at you, Godskin Duo. And as we've already started talking about the Dragon Incantations, as you're going around collecting the cookbooks, you also want to be going around collecting all of the spell books. There are many, many ways to collect all of the sorceries and incantations in this game. You will probably have naturally accidentally locked yourself out of a few of them unless you have done every single NPC questline. And I do have separate videos for most NPC questlines by now, so if you do want to go and check them out, please do. The sorcery scrolls and incantation prayer books actually only cover a small portion of all available spells in the game. They are actually tied behind so many different mechanics, merchants, quests, scrolls, drops from bosses, drops from teardrop scarabs, earned from remembrances. There are so many ways to get them that if I tried to list every single one, you would be watching this video until next year. So I'll call out the scrolls and just leave you with the information that before you head into New Game Plus, you should go and seek out as many spells as you can. There's a few NPCs that you can then bring these scrolls and prayer books to, but I suggest saving them all up and bringing them all here to the Turtle Pope, because he's the only NPC that can collate all of your spells and incantations together, and you have one handy location to buy them all from then. As you can see, I've just given him a load of different scrolls and spell books, and I can now buy an absolute plethora of spells from him. So, for the sorceries earned from scrolls, there is only three. You've got the Royal House Scroll, which is probably the first one you'll come across and you'll find it in this camp just to the southwest of the Aghil Lake South site of Grace. Next up we've got the Academy Scroll which is found among some gravestones northwest of the Church of Irith and finally the Conspectus Scroll which is on a corpse in a room to the left of the doorway to the Great Hall within the Rea Lucaria Academy. Next up, let's blitz through all the prayer books that you can find. You'll find the Assassin's Prayer Book in the Round Table Hold, locked behind the second imp statue on the lower floor. The Godskin Prayer Book is in Stormvale Castle, just here, and the closest site of grace to that is the Rampart Tower. Next up, we've got the Fire Monk's Prayer Book here in Lyurnia of the Lakes at this outpost. Also, northeast of this location, you'll find the Dragon Cult Prayer Book when you defeat a knight, and that's just south of the Artist's Shack. Next, we have the Two Fingers Prayer Book, which can be found on the first floor of the Fortified Manor, aka the real Round Table Hold, in Lanedale, Royal Capital. We've also got the Giant's Prayer Book in the Mountaintops of the Giants, and you can find it here in the Guardian's Garrison. And finally is the Ancient Dragon Prayer Book here in the Crumbling Farah Missoula. Next up, we're going to take a look at Golden Seeds and Sacred Tears. I'll combine these into one tip because they are both upgrades for your flasks. Golden Seeds will allow you to have more uses, up to 14, and Sacred Tears will upgrade the efficiency or the potency of your flasks, and this can go up to plus 12. I'll cover the Sacred Tears first, as it's very quick and easy. There are exactly 12 Sacred Tears in the game, so you can max this out in one playthrough, but don't worry if you don't. Even when 
when it gets to about plus eight or plus nine, it's very, very powerful. And you will find each of the 12 sacred tiers at each of the 12 churches around the lands between. There is a super quick overview of all of the sacred tiers for you. And next up, as I say, we have the golden seeds. You can get up to a total of 14 flasks. However, the requirement of how many seeds you need will increase every two flasks. So therefore, you need a total of 30 seeds to reach the maximum number. However, there are a total of 44 obtainable golden seeds in the game. So as long as you are doing everything else on this list, you should naturally come across enough golden seeds to fully upgrade your flask. My absolute favourite location if you need a couple of quick early game upgrades. As soon as you're able to get to the Altus Plateau, that means you can sprint through all the enemies and get to Lanedale Royal Capital. And on the outskirts towards the west and the southwest, there are four golden seeds that you can grab just like that. No enemies around, there are two phantom trees and you can grab four easy golden seeds for a couple of early game flask upgrades. The rest of them are scattered pretty evenly throughout the entire game, so just make sure you're being vigilant and exploring as you're doing everything else on this list, and you'll max out your golden seeds and your flasks in no time. There are two different types of walking mausoleums you will see around the game. Some have a bell hanging underneath, and some do not. And mausoleums without a bell have a limited pool of remembrances to choose from. And if you didn't know, the reason these mausoleums are so important is because they will allow you to duplicate remembrances so you can grab both rewards from a boss soul. There are only seven mausoleums in the game and there are 15 remembrances, meaning you can only acquire both rewards for just under half of the remembrances. So be very careful in your choice of which ones to duplicate. So as I start to explain to you what to do with walking mausoleums and why they're so important, let me show you the locations of all seven on the map here as I talk. All demigods, such as Morgoth and Melania, can only be duplicated with the Bell variant mausoleums, whereas all other remembrances, such as the Regal Ancestor, Astel, and the Fire Giant, can be duplicated at any mausoleum. Use this information as you will, so that you can grab all of the rewards that are the most important to you. And that brings me back to NPCs and their quest lines. This is definitely the most challenging one to address on this list because it's not really something you can leave to the end of the game and then just go and do. Most NPC quest lines are very time sensitive and if you haven't started doing them right from the get go, you're probably going to miss most of them. So what I would actually advise doing is just keeping this in mind for your next playthrough, be it Journey 2 or a brand new game. As as I mentioned previously, I've done most NPC quest lines as their own separate videos by now, so you can always pull them up and have them to one side as you do your next run and focus on all the NPC quest lines then. However, some of them are still doable even this late on in the game. In the playthrough you see me doing right now, I have already defeated the Elden Beast and finished the game, I just haven't progressed through to Journey 2 yet. And as you can see, it is still allowing me to do the quest lines of the likes of Hayeta and Alexander, which I didn't think it would. So you might be surprised that you're not locked out of as many of them as you thought you may be, which is great news because it means you can go through and do these quests at your leisure as a really super powered endgame character character before you then move on to your second journey. Also, not only are the characters so beautifully crafted and the acting and the lore so gorgeous and in depth with NPC quest lines, but the quest rewards are also incredible. You get some of the most powerful items, weapons and talismans in the game locked behind NPCs, so make sure you do take the time to go and do these. Next up, we're going to talk about legendary items. There are an absolute ton of legendary items in the game, from spells and weapons to spirit ashes and talismans. Almost all of them can be grabbed whenever you want. However, a couple are locked behind quest lines and one of them is entirely missable. So if you have come to this video at the end of the game before clicking that journey to and you haven't already grabbed the bolt of Grand Sacks, unfortunately you have missed it for this playthrough because that is only obtainable whilst Lanedell is still the royal capital, not the ashen capital. However, most other legendary items are still 
still acquirable. And of course, if you're a completionist like me, you want to grab them for them achievements anyway. Pretty much all of the most powerful spirit ashes in the game are legendary, and the same applies for many of the weapons and talismans as well. So definitely go check out the full list and make sure you grab every single one that you can. They are found all over the world in some weird and wonderful places. So again, just to stress, for people that may be jumping around the video a bit and might have missed it the first time, I'm not going to call out the location for every single one. That isn't the point of this video. This is just to let you know everything that you should do and tell you to go and do it. And now, you have pretty much every single thing you could possibly have in this game. There is one very rare, very important item we now want to go and grab that will allow us to be as prepared as we can possibly be for New Game Plus. And that item is the Larval Tier. The Larval Tier is used to respec your character, and you unlock this function by speaking to Renala once you've defeated her. Larval Tiers are scattered all over the world in many different forms. Forms. There is even one right at the start of the game as early as Limgrave. However, you need to defeat a wandering noble who was actually a rune bear in disguise. There are four more in these locations in Liurnia, and there are many others throughout the world, most of which actually reside underground in Nokron and Noxtella. They are single use and they are limited, so use them wisely. But my biggest piece of advice for your first use of a larval tier when you get to the end of the game is respec for a dexterity faith build and then use the sacred relic sword which is the weapon you can get from the elden beast remembrance to farm the big group of Albanorix atop the palace approach site of grace in mogwin's palace the reason for this is it's the quickest rune farm in the game the ash of war for this weapon the wave of gold is extremely powerful and far-reaching and it will destroy every single Albanoric here in one hit Combined with Gold Pickle Foul Feet and the Golden Scarab, you can get upwards of 50,000 runes in a couple of seconds. So you can just sit here farming runes for a few minutes or a few hours, just until you get bored. That will allow you to get so many extra levels to prepare yourself for your next journey. Once you're satisfied you've got enough levels, you can then go back to Renala and respec once again into whatever build you want to use for your next playthrough. And that is my final tip. Once you have farmed the late game areas as much as you want, the only thing left for you to do is craft your build and mold your character however you see fit so you can enter into journey two and make the lands between your bitch <laughs> That is it. That is absolutely every single thing I can think of that you want to do to 100% this game before you go into Journey 2. And then you can clear up the rest of the achievements, get the other endings, do any NPC quest lines you didn't do, grab the last couple of legendaries, but this will set you up to be an absolute powerhouse no matter what you decide to do next. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.